Eurovision is all, or any show, any format is about developing, and you have to make changes for the concept not to die. Um, and sometimes the changes are good, and sometimes they're bad, but they're always necessary to keep the format alive. Now we decided that the way to do something new and fresh was to remove something and take away a very dominant layer. What we noticed was the, the, the dynamic and the depth and, um, and the contrast in the pictures were just amazing when we didn't have a big LED wall washing things, just washing it out. Also, those countries that are using video are using it on their own expense, but those video clips are every frame every frame of those video clips are so well thought through and that adds a value. Those years when we have a big video layer, um, a lot of the songs is like, you know, it, it, it really doesn't add anything to it. So, um, that, no, it, was, it was definitely the right decision. It was a creative decision that came from the executive producers originally. And that origin from the fact that we had a winner on stage last year claiming that music is not fireworks. And that's where it all, obviously what he meant was focus should be on the song and the artist, not on the LED screen in the back. Um, so we discussed it with, with uh, we discussed it within the core team first. And then uh, my first call was to Florian Vider, our stage designer, and, and I said, listen, uh, we want to cancel video this year. <laughs> and it was like, but, 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 everything in my stage is video, because it was. And I was like, yeah, um, so you need to rethink a little. Um, and he did, and he realized that, well, his original shape and design was still working really well, even without LED. Uh, my second call was to Jerry. I said, hey, I just spoke to the executive producers and I spoke to Florian. We're gonna take out, we're gonna take out video this year. And it was, both with Florian and, and Jerry, was like 60 seconds of silence. Because I was like, they were like, and then Jerry said, so it's all about light? It's all about light. I love it. <laughs> when we did that, I mean, it was an extremely bold statement. We also challenged all the delegations to be creative, to come up with clever ideas of how to make their three minutes interesting. And oh boy, they took that challenge for sure. Uh, they, uh, the, the amount of props we have this year is out of this world. Um, and there is a couple of very challenging changeovers, but, but it's, it's definitely worth it. I think we have an absolutely amazing show in, in the bag. Now we just need to execute the, the last broadcast. It's there to define the depth of the stage. Um, and it's also directly connected to our narrative because it it's resembles the hull of a ship. Uh, which also the venue ceiling does and the whole ocean theme in the logo types. Um, but it's there to, to give us the definition of depth as a middle ground. They are all video mapped. Uh, all, the, all the magic panels and the mini, mini panels are pixel mapped from media servers. Um, so it kind of turns into a LED wall on steroids, if you like. <laughs> it's an extremely versatile tool. And besides doing colors, we can do shapes. Um, and uh, we even do the countdown for the voting with the magic panels. Uh, so it, it's a fantastic tool. That was a request from Jerry because he needed something with um, that he could tilt. So, so they're here for two main reasons. One is obviously to illuminate the, the, the stage and the artists and the audience, but we can also tilt them up and illuminate the beautiful wooden structure that the building rests upon. Uh, so we have 262s, I think, so quite many. <laughs> they are 
very bright. For example, the Xcore 900 are very, very, very bright. Lovely, lovely picture. And that whole development of getting LED sourced fixtures is, I mean, it is the future. We're saving a lot of money in, in diesel on this. That, that the new generations of moving lights are so much more power efficient than, than the conventional moving lights. So it's, it's very good. I think it's complete fucking bonkers. It was like, really? I mean, don't you have anything better to do? <laughs> I think that once these idiots have realized what they actually suggested, what I mean, the scope of it, um, because, I mean, it's not only television, it, it affects everything. It even affects the corporate event with the taco bar and the cover band. Um, yeah, let's hope that they are fired before they <laughs> manage to decide something. <laughs> there is always big challenges with, with doing Eurovision. Um, it was quite funny when we had the first meeting with the venue, they were like, oh yeah, and then the stage is here, you put one cluster here and one there, and, and that was it. And I was like, now we more like gonna hang 28 clusters of PA. And they were like, why would you do that? I was like, put one on the stage right and one on the stage left. Um, so they did, did not at all understand where we were coming with from with that. We. Uh, we hung 28 clusters of, of speakers, um, and I mean the sound setting is is enormous. We're having 239 microphones uh, in total. I think we're running 18 in-air monitor systems in parallel. Um, 250 speakers are flown, um, so I mean it's it's huge. And what was very interesting was that the whole team that manage it is hired directly by RTP, while the supply comes of the gear comes from Italy. And this is something that we've done quite su successfully a couple of times in the past, that we hire the team, um, so we handpick the team and then then supplier just boxes and, and cables goes out on a uh, public procurement. Um, because it's such a specific knowledge you need and on a very high level. So it, it makes sense doing it. Every, everyone can supply boxes and speakers and whatever. Not everyone can supply a, a full crew of 30 people that can operate the Eurovision production. We are here in Lisbon deploying the Digital 6000 system for the wireless microphones and uh, handheld microphones, the so body packs and handhelds. Um, we're using uh, the dynamic transducer on the handhelds, the MD9235. Uh, we are deploying approximately overall in the press tent, rehearsal room, sound check room and in the venue. Uh, 100 mi wireless microphones and more than 40 wireless in-ear systems. Um, the biggest challenge and uh, request for us is that we have redundancy in the system because for us uh, security comes first in this event. Uh, we are not allowed to have any issues during the production. And this is how the system is set up. Everything is at least redundant or even more. A uh, single point of failure is not existing to a certain degree unless the talent, the musician, will forget the microphone somewhere in the bathroom. Uh, but that's a different story. Um, a major job at this point in time after planning at the beginning in February where we came to here to Lisbon for a spectrum scan. Um, we started the planning in a way that uh, our system was laid out. Uh, we, from that point onwards, we were in close contact with the head of audio, uh, Daniel Beckermann from Auditive, and he incorporated our planning into his main system. Um, by saying all that, um, mid of March, we put the system into operation in the headquarters in Germany. Uh, there it was running for two weeks, 24-7. Uh, we shifted uh, beginning of April to Lisbon and then we had the load in at the 13th of April. Um, so that was the starting point. 
Um, for us, uh, this event is challenging because of a very simple reason, the unauthorized use of wireless microphones from ENG crews or delegations or journalists. If they are coming in, they are bringing their wireless microphones with them and this is obviously not allowed. Uh, they are requested to use um, wired, wire-bound microphones, but at the end of the day, uh, some people obviously forget this little detail and then we have to hunt them down. This is our so-called hunting, RF hunting event, where we start to talk uh, to those delegations after we measured them. Uh, we are scanning the spectrum constantly in all venues here in Lisbon, uh, even in the press tent, which is next door. Uh, so we are scanning constantly and we are observing if there is something uh, going on, which we are not having in our plan. So, and then we are asking them to shut this off. And for most of the part, it's working fine and people are friendly, so this is a good collaboration. We are deploying here the 2000 series. Um, we have in the venue 20, in the arena, 24 channels of in-ear systems up and running constantly in stereo, and then of course in the press tent another eight, and in the soundcheck room another 16 in-ear systems. All in stereo except the one which we have in the press tent. From the antenna side, we are deploying uh, A5000 CPs, circular polarized antennas, for transmit and receive uh, on both sides we are using them. Uh, up to 1.2 kilometers of RF cable we use. I personally think they are pretty happy at this point in time. Uh, feedback is very positive, sound is good. Uh, we have a tremendously positive feedback on the in-ear system. Uh, people are happy, uh, specifically when you think about the fact that a lot of those artists usually do not use in-ear systems. Uh, they are extremely happy, sound overall is good, also in the venue the PA system sounds great uh, and we are helping the guys from Auditives, the sound guys, uh, to have the best sound for this event. At the moment we are in the back of uh the main OBI van that is covering the, the, the Eurovision Song Contest and we shortly will have a look on the inside of the OBI van and have more details on the technical facilities that we have provided for this event. So, um, we are doing the production with 19 HD cameras, we are doing the production in 1080 uh, i50. Um, we have two models of cameras, we have the Grass Valley's uh, LDX86s and the Sony P1s that are used for the special cams, uh, for the rail cams and, uh, and the 2D cam. And we also have two uh, Grass Valley's uh, compact C80s that are being used for the steady cams. They have a, sh a compact body to be able to have less weight and since they are working for three weeks with a lot of weight on their back, we try to make them more comfortable by having less, less to support them. At this moment, we are doing the full operations in this obi van. And in case of emergency, then we'll switch over partially or completely to the other obi van. Depending on which type of emergency do we have, we change a part of the crew or the complete crew in case of need. The main shader is in contact, uh, constant contact uh, with uh, with Jerry, the light director, that I presume that you already met. Yeah. Uh, and they are constantly communicating to adjust uh, levels of, of color or light uh, to the show to look nice to everyone. That's a, a mutual effort between the light direction uh, from Jerry, the light director, and the shaders over here. And as I mentioned just a little bit before, they are in constant uh, contact. They are always communicating to each other to make sure that each other doesn't interfere. The, the, the lights don't interfere with the job of each other. So, of course, Jerry wants to show his work that is very well done, I must say. And the shaders uh, compensate at the same time in communication with Jerry what needs to be compensated. So yeah, they are always in contact with each other. On this area is where all the graphics with the voting and the, and the lower thirds are, are uh, launched. 
this machine is also backed up uh, with a second machine that is running it simultaneously in the other truck and in case of emergency we can swap only partially this area of the truck so if this machine fails the other machine can be taken over at the vision uh, switchers the opening sequence of EBU goes from this machine and all the videos that are in the middle of the show so the bumpers or the promotional videos that uh, have been made postcards is all launched right here in this area is where all the multicam magic happens over here we have again the queue pilot that is locked by time code for each song and pre-programmed it was pre-programmed by Paula and Pedro the two multicam directors that chose did the first selection of shots to present to the delegations and when we start with standing rehearsals the delegation started watching these clips and giving feedback so everything was starting to be readjusted according to the wishes of the delegations over here in the back is where the executive production uh, of the broadcasts and also the show contest producer are sitting and they are communicating constantly with the show with the show producers inside the venue so if something goes wrong inside the venue they are the first ones knowing and they are relaying in case of anything that needs to be changed to the TV director. So TV director is focused on, on the job that needs to be done and they relay all the necessary information to the TV director and to the script in case of need. If there's no need to involve the TV director, they don't. So they concentrate all this information here and then they do what they need to do with it. So all the music and all the interval acts and the hosts are being mixed on this desk. The desk is all pre-programmed with snapshots for each delegation. So of course every song is, is a bit different um, and there are different adjustments that cannot be made on the fly. So everything is pre-programmed due to the three weeks of two weeks of rehearsals that we had. It was enough time to program and adjust every delegation um, the best way possible. Um, there are more than uh, 190 sh channels of audio coming into this desk. It's a huge setup. It's a lot of uh, audio coming in and also a lot of audio going out. I don't exactly know the amount of audio going out of the desk, but at least in is 190 channels that are coming in. So let's say that we have a major failure on OB1. Over here, we make the switch to the OB2. All switch audio, intercom, uh, video, and data. So everything is switched from this from this container. It's all pre-programmed and ready to go. These are all the MediaNet frames. We have uh, 160.